Hey guys! Um, I did something a little different with this video because uh, I'm still trying to get used to the whole GoPro thing. Um, for this and Hotel Susanna Cox, what I did was I entered, I took all my photos, and then I turned my camera on and walked through the entire house one more time. This is an abandoned French manor. Tiny little town, um, kind of relatively close to the German border. It was about a five or six hour drive for me. Uh, it took a little longer than it should have because I got myself lost a couple times. But this is one of the most intact locations I visited, aside from the Charm Hotel. Lots of stuff in here. Of course, some things have been tagged, some things have been removed. But overall, pretty good. Um, there were a lot of rooms downstairs with just shit piled everywhere. Just bunches and bunches of uh, banana boxes <laughs> for some reason. It's like, it's so weird. They trashed some rooms and then some looked like someone was just sleeping there. Like the day before. Very strange. And then you have all this graffiti in the hallways and then you go into another perfectly intact room. It's... I don't know what went on here, but it's definitely interesting. The house itself is absolutely beautiful, and I, I can't imagine why someone would just leave it and leave all this cool furniture behind. But um, from what I gathered from photo albums and things, I'm assuming the last person here was an old woman. She probably passed away and the family didn't do much with it. Uh, I think she was German because there were a lot of books on learning French from German. And I found a couple old photos of people in military gear. I posted that on uh, the gallery on Patreon, patreon.com slash scarlet camera. Which, if you're seeing this, you're probably already there. <laughs> so, I really want to know what went down here. The only thing I'm disappointed with about this trip is that right when I was about to get out, is I didn't really have great phone service in this area, and right as I was about to leave and head back to my car, another Urban Explorer friend wrote me, and he's like, hey, I saw you're at the French Manor, here's another one that's like an hour away, also very intact, blah blah blah, and he sent me coordinates, <laughs> and I really, really, really wanted to go. But it was already getting kind of late. Uh, I would have needed a hotel for the night. I was kind of lost in general. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I got a bit turned around on the way there. By turned around, I mean I passed this location. I passed the coordinates for it, I saw where it was, and I was looking for a parking space. And this tiny town has one main winding road through it, and I wasn't really sure where I could park, so I just did a quick drive through of the town, and I think I took a turn somewhere and I just GPS the location again. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna park in a parking lot I saw a while ago. So, turn my GPS on, follow it, and then my GPS takes me up this road that keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and going up and up and up into the trees, and I wasn't really paying attention, and by the time I realized I can't turn around. The road turned to dirt. I'm in the middle of the freaking woods. And I, I, I'm driving my little slug bug, okay? This, this thing is tiny. It can turn around almost anywhere. Not on this road. So I had to keep going. And it was really scary because the road kept getting bumpier and bumpier and smaller and smaller. And I'm like, great, I'm going to get stranded in the middle of the woods with no cell phone service. Ah. So that was, that was about a 20 minute detour. It finally um, 
I finally found a turnoff for a normal road again and passed like a, a logging camp or something. Got back to where I was supposed to be <laughs> and parked, but uh, after that stress and with the sun already going down, <laughs> I didn't really want to try finding a secondary location, so I'm going to have to go back. I think I'd like to go back with a friend, take them to this location, and then check out the other chateau or whatever it is, the other house. But, oh, stuff like that happens to me so often. I'm really not good with directions. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just checked my video footage because I decided to film that drive. Um, looks like it was more like a 50 minute to an hour detour. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was utterly ridiculous. Uh, I'll post that later, maybe. It's really shaky and it was on my phone. <laughs> Good times. I'm realizing now that even though I've cut out a lot of footage, I'm still left with about a 26 minute video at this point, unless I cut it down some more. All I did was walk through the entire house, and I'm like, oh, this will be like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. No, apparently not. It's 26 minutes of frickin' Cloverfield. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. So I'm sorry if this is super boring for you guys. I'll try to minimize it as much as I can. But uh, feel free to just skip through. <laughs> oh, jeez.
it absolutely hurts my soul to see so much beautiful furniture just left behind to rot. I would kill to have some of this stuff, but in another life, I guess. There is an amazing, amazing couch and chair set on the first floor in the living room. And I got so unbelievably angry because another urban exploring group wrote their tag in Sharpie on one of these beautiful chairs. I, ugh, fills me with absolute rage. Don't do that. Don't do that. Take only pictures. Don't fucking write your name on some beautiful intact furniture. Why would you do that? How can you call yourself an urban explorer if you're gonna do that? We don't want you in this community. That was my rant. I'm going to assume that the rest of the trashing and graffiti wasn't by us. <laughs> Let me convince myself of that. I want to have some faith in my community. <laughs> oh, here's that, uh, the photo I found of the guys in military outfits. What war was that from? I don't know. Somebody help me. It's in the gallery. There's a picture of it in the gallery. Here, as you can see, is where the absolute chaos begins. I just, I have so many questions about what happened. Why is this all trash? Why is it just some rooms? Why are some perfectly fine? Why didn't the family take this? It looks like they started packing up and moving and then just stopped and left. I don't know why, but something tells me these people really, really, really liked lights. Wonder what it is.
Sorry for the super, super shaky basement footage. I actually didn't shoot down here before I started filming, so this was my first time looking at everything down here. I almost didn't go into the basement because I had a little bit of angst. It was very, very, very dark down here. Pitch black, even though it was daylight outside, so... It was a bit ooky spooky. Plus, I always adventure alone. I'm looking to change that at some point, bring a friend or start a group, but at the moment it's just me. I like traveling alone a lot because I'm faster, I'm quieter, and I feel like there's less chance that something will go wrong. If you're with a group, there's always a chance that someone's going to be a fucking idiot, <laughs> so <laughs> probably better safe than sorry. But yeah, again, sorry for the shaky footage here. Time jump, back upstairs, first floor. I believe this was the kitchen? Or the kitchens to the left there, or... Everything's a mess. Oh, wait, yeah, this is the kitchen. And now, finally, at the end of the video, we get to the good shit. The living room. And dining room, I guess. I wonder what this place looked like at its peak when people were still living here. It's just, it's amazing. Look at this furniture! Have I mentioned I love this furniture so much? Ah. Well, it looks like I've cut this down to 20 and a half minutes. Awesome. Again, the full gallery is at patreon.com slash scarlet camera. Thanks for putting up with my horrible GoPro skills, and I hope you're at least mildly amused. Bye.